All right, so um, my name is Shalon Guo. I'm from the University of Delaware, and I worked on the open source undercarriage decontamination system with our advisor, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Harris from um, the University of Delaware. And um, I also worked with my team members, Darian Abru, Diana Kitt, and Lucas Surge, but um, they couldn't be here today. And I'll just tell you a little bit about what we did this semester. Um, trying to come up with the decontamination system for USD APHIS. So just a little bit about um, the presentation today, we're gonna go over the problem motivation, um, our metrics, which are the values that our designs were based off of and kind of like our target values and what we wanted uh, our design to do. And basically our design is just based entirely off of those metrics. And then we also have our spray system design and our collection basin design, kind of a two-part uh, design that we had and what we came up as our final prototype after a lot of testing. And then finally, any questions we have. So uh, just really quickly, um, obviously our problem definition motivation was uh, to provide an option for small farmers to decontaminate the undercarriage of their cars and places that they couldn't reach so that we can prevent the movement of farm animal diseases um, from farm to farm as vehicles enter and leave the farm. And we also really wanted it to be cost, uh, not cost prohibitive, so keeping it within 250 to $500 was really, really important um, from talking to uh, Mr. Birnbaum and our other sponsors at um, the University of Delaware College of Agriculture. And then we have our metrics that our design was based off of. And we came up with this talking with our sponsors at the university. So um, we had our, uh, spo our sponsors at the university was Eric Benson, and he was basically working at the College of Ag and kind of our liaison with um, Mr. Birnbaum and with our advisor too. So um, we came up with first the cost, which was really important to hit. We had a target value of 250 acceptable value of 500. And in the end, um, our entire prototype cost around $283. So we were able to meet that metric. And then that came just from uh, what they thought a small farmer would be able to afford. Uh, right now, the current systems on the market are tens of thousands of dollars. So that was a very big uh, barrier for them. And then our second metric was cleaning efficiency. And in this case, from talking to Mr. Benson and um, people from USDA APHIS, basically we define cleaning efficiency as coverage or the, the amount of surface area that our, the spray system made contact with the undercarriage. And that's assuming that if the fluid from our spray system hits that undercarriage point, that point of contact will assume um, disinfection of the vehicle. So that's kind of how we defined it throughout our project. And then our third metric was load capacity. And that just comes from how much is this spray system able to withstand because there's going to be trucks on it. There's going to be vehicles. We said our largest vehicle was probably going to be a, a Ford F-150, a pickup truck, um, not so much something like a big industrial vehicle that would be used on more commercial farms. And in the end, our prototype was able to meet all three of those metrics, which was really great. So we broke our system up into two different parts. So basically there's a spray system and then also a collection system of the design. And first we'll go over the spray system. So to come up with our spray, spray system design, we kind of drew out three different options based on different focuses that we had. So our first focus was actually we were thinking more of in terms of the wheels because we were also researching where is the most which area of the vehicle is going to be the most infected i guess if there were to be a disease outbreak and um we thought maybe the wheels would be but then from talking more with mr birnbaum we were really trying to we sh our focus should be more of the undercarriage in places where the farmer can't reach so then we looked more on just focusing entirely on an undercarriage. And so our second design option is really using not a lot of piping, trying to decrease that cost and keep it very minimal kind of. Um, but we decided ultimately, ultimately to go with something more along the lines of design three, which had more coverage of the 
overall undercarriage system, and then also attached side sprayers, which had nozzles instead of um, just first we just drilled holes in them. And we put nozzles on these side sprayers in design three um, to get rid of some of those holes because having too many of the holes would decrease the pressure of the system and that would lead to not very good cleaning efficiency for us. So that's how we kind of came up with our third design option and putting nozzles on the side on those upright side sprayers rather than um, just drilling holes into them. And we used PVC piping, which happened to be the most cost effective and also very durable uh, material for our spray system. And we decided you, mostly to use holes because the pressure was just a lot better. Uh, just simply drilling, I think the, the holes were three thirty seconds of an inch. So they were pretty small, but they had a lot of power. And um, when it came up onto the undercarriage, it also created more surface area. Um, that was hitting, that had fluid hitting the undercarriage. And so we also did a little bit of modeling with our different design options. So we had our triangles here, which the tips of the triangles actually show where the sprays from the spray system is hitting the undercarriage. And you can see um, we had one for design one and design three because um, we actually built design one, given that we had um, a lot of time and it was relatively easy to build these models. So we decided to do that on design one and design three. And uh, you can see that there's a lot more coverage from design three. And um, the blue is supposed to be the collection trough and the orange is supposed to be the undercarriage of the vehicle. And um, I'm not exactly sure which model was used um, just because my teammate was using this and they have more experience with this, but you can see from the different uh, tips of the triangles that we had a lot more coverage from design three. And then finally our selected design, we have um, the spray system um, for design three made out of PVC pipe. Um, the hose, there would be a hose that's connected to that um, the northern end of the spray system and it would be taking uh, the water source would probably be some sort of large tank um, or basin uh, so that it's a steady uh, constant flow of water into the spray system there would be less suction with that and you can see the side sprayers and um, it's basically where we did all our testing and everything too and the collection system which we'll talk about next uh, and so right now we're talking a little bit about design testing too on how um, the ways that we tested our spray system. So and trying to see measure the cleaning efficiency. Uh, one of the biggest challenges was you know you can't really exactly go underneath the car and measure out. There's a lot of different parts. So we decided to use different types of models to model kind of the undercarriage of the car and uh, just different ways of simulating a dirty car or um, trying to s make the removal efficiency more visual. So you can see in design in the second picture, um, label number two, they we had a wooden plank and we had paper on it and we ran it over the spray system in six minute intervals. We um, calculated one wash would be six minutes. And we actually tried to use citric acid and pH paper to see if the, um, the pH paper would indicate coverage from the spray system, whether it changed colors or not. Uh, the difficulty with that was because it was paper, it showed a lot of capillary action that didn't really simulate uh, how the water would really act on the underside of a car. So that wasn't a great test. And then, so we tried to model more of an undercarriage using a piece of plywood that was eight inches wide, which is typical width of a car, and holding it about a foot off the ground and moving it solely through the spray system. And instead of using pH paper, we used this kind of mud grease grime mixture that we took, we um, adapted from uh, Mr. Birnbaum's um, I think there was a document about how uh, different grind mixtures and different ways to test them. And so we adapted kind of a, a recipe from that. And it, it kind of created like a worst case scenario for us because the mud was so thick. And um, 
you can see that there's a lot of coverage in uh, picture five and picture six and not so much worrying uh, so much on the removal because that's we're really looking at coverage but by seeing the removal it kind of showed us where those that fluid has made that point of contact and has definitely um, gotten the coverage so it was Definitely a little bit of a tricky part getting to measure the coverage, but from seeing the removal, we were able to see the coverage as well. And then um, continuing our design testing, um, we tried to, we cut off any empty spaces of the spray system that had just water tumbling around and try to increase the pressure of the system. And so, and we also tried to do different uh, mixtures of grease because we realized some of it may not be simulating what is actually found on a farm. And um, we, had, we put it on the plywood and we, we also made the plywood into a bunch of uh, squares, um, eight inch by eight inch squares, so that we could more easily quantify um, how much was taken off or how much was um, covered um, from the plywood. And then in our further testing, we actually tried to see what is it going to be like on the actual car. So uh, in order to test the coverage for that, we used cornstarch and flour and tried to dust it all over the car, undercarriage of the car, and run it through the spray system, and then take several, several pictures of before and after and how the spray system performed. And it worked out pretty well with those tests. It got off pretty quickly and um, within one wash. And so now to the second part of our design is the collection basin. So first, at first our design thinking was we'll have a wooden trough that's pretty big, that's on the whole, that is complete, is a complete platform for the car. But then we really realized how that would be too expensive and uh, just really bulky and um, end up being, just this part end up being $300. So we realized we couldn't go with that. Uh, so we completely tried to rethink and um, got rid of the wood and came up something more came up with something more like this, where instead of being made entirely of wood, there would only be a tarp, and the it would have a wooden frame, and then there would be an outlet at the corner which would be positioned um, on the farm as the um, lowest corner so that the water would properly drain uh, to that corner, and there would be an outlet pipe made of. Uh, HDPE and it could flow into some sort of collection unit. We were definitely thinking more of a sand filter type of thing where it could just flow directly into the ground and back into um, the groundwater system. But um, if the farmer was, wouldn't be able to afford that, they could also just send it right into a plastic tank. And um, if it was filled with detergent and disinfectant, that would have to be uh, ordered for pickup by some hazardous waste. Um, company. But um, yes, we tested our collection basin and we were able to test it um, for several washes and it was able to drain the way that we wanted it to. It drained through the pipe and not anywhere else. It never really overflowed because um, of the volume was fairly big. The only water that was not hitting the truck was the water that was not being captured by the collection basin itself. So it wasn't really any type of, as long as the disinfectant is not um, extremely hazardous, it wouldn't be a problem, but that's definitely something that we would want to fix in like another iteration of the prototype. But all in all, it, it captured any type of water that was hitting the car. And so this is our final prototype um, with the spray system, the collection basin, and we also installed switches on the on the corners, if you can see. Um, and those are switches that the driver would be able to turn on by themselves, and they would be able to run through it. And it would basically just be a timer, and um, it would run for six minutes and then shut off. And um, we have it at both ends, so they could enter from either side. And also collecting our collecting our water source to our spray system, there is a pump. And in that way, um, that that's the majority of the cost of our prototype is this pump. It costs around $100. And um, it would be able to supply more pressure for the, whole, the entire system as a whole. 
and also kind of separate um, the water source from the spray system so that if the farmers say wanted to use a different water source, say just connected to their hose, um, connecting to the city water system, that'd be fine too. So definitely the path forward, we have um, been able to make a user manual for the farmer that can possibly be published on a website or um, just to have on hand to learn all the different parts of our uh, spray system and collection system and how to build it and just make it really uh, comprehensive for somebody to who um, wanted to buy this and buy the materials for this and make it themselves, they were able to do that with this user manual. And also we have a couple of future design recommendations um, for any improvements is to uh, find even more ways to increase the water pressure and uh, help in the removal of the dirt um, because that was not so much our focus until the end. And that by increasing the water pressure, you can increase the removal and by increase, increasing the removal of the sediments and the organic material, you can definitely um, better the cleaning efficiency. And then also metering in uh, disinfectant and or detergent so that we can easily turn a valve or something so that we don't have to change, completely change water sources for the spray system when the farmer wants to switch from disinfectant or detergent. And then also um, implementing a, a type of heated water source. Um, that would be definitely something that we wanted to get to but weren't able to um, this time around. Um, and that's it. Um, and that's a picture of one of our teammates after a lot of cornstarch um, design testing. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Salin. Any questions? Um, hi, this is Lori Miller. Um, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much for the presentation as well as the work that you've done. Um, just one question. Um, does the driver stay in the vehicle and slowly drive through the unit during that six minute um, time period? Yes, yes. So they would have to drive um, through the entire space system within that uh, time frame. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, hi, this is Nathan Birnbaum. How often do you think you would need to change the sand auger mixture that you use as the filter? Oh, the sand filter is actually, um, with the right components and everything, it should last about 10 to 15 years. Uh, you really wouldn't have to change it very often. Um, okay, but when all the grease you know, from underneath the vehicle falls onto it, will that absorb all the grease and you know, will you fill up all the uh, uh, the parts that actually capture the grease? Uh, yeah. Become saturated, in other words. Uh, yes, um, the sand filter is designed to capture um, both particles and grease and um, some biological contaminants as well. So it's um, it would be enough to basically make make it make the water quality good enough so that it could re-enter um, into the ground. Okay. And then the other question I had was when I when I was reading through the report, am I correct that if the grease underneath the vehicle was dry? you were not successful in removing the, the, the dirt or the dirt and grease mixture. Is that correct? Um, in certain, that might have been in um, previous testing. It was definitely harder to get the grease off, I think, because um, the, the grime mixture that we had made had been so thick that it, it was about um, a, half an, a half an inch thick, which in where we edited it to be more like yeah, an eighth, of, an eighth of an inch thick. So um, it was definitely a bit harder, but then we, after we increased the pressure and um, mostly increased the pressure of the system, we were able to get the grease off, although not measurable. Okay, that's good. And also, would you be able to send me the, that handbook that you mentioned? I have the report in PowerPoint, but I don't didn't uh, the handbook. 
Yeah, it actually should be attached as an appendix on the, it should okay. be the very last appendix in the report. If not, I can definitely send it again. Okay, um, no, it's in the appendix and I've got it, yep. So thank you then. All right, anybody have any other questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, Shanlin, thank you very much. This is a great presentation and um, really appreciate it.